so yes, welcome everyone to today's Stand Speakers event. Um, it's uh, sort of the uh, well, the midpoint, the last talk in in February, which is a sort of nice uh, midpoint of, to to some extent of this uh, speaker series schedule. And uh, very happy to have Julie Laplante with us today. Uh, she's an old old friend of mine. I'm very happy to have uh, met her two years before beginning my master's thesis when I. Uh, knocked on her door that was, of course, open, and uh, she welcomed me with, with open arms, listening to me ramble about how I love canoeing and how it might be possible to uh, match anthropology with that. And uh, she took me serious as a, you know, a third year undergraduate student. And uh, I, I'm here right now, uh, to a large uh, extent, thanks to, to Julie for having uh, believed in me and having uh, fostered a an atmosphere with so many students who uh, believe in themselves and each other. Um, so Julie has done a lot of things other than teaching, of course, and supervising. Uh, she's, she's done research in, um, in the Brazilian Amazon, in South Africa, in, uh, on the island of Java, and more recently Cameroon. And she'll be giving a talk today um, entitled, what's it going to happen? Uh, plant calling. Uh, I, I just think of happy plants, but uh, plant yeah, calling. Just say happy plants. <laughs> <laughs> plant calling the joy of Bessinglege Forest, Cameroon. Uh, so without any further ado or butchering of words, I'll now present Julie Laplante. So you can take the floor and I'll uh, share the photo. Okay. Thank you, Nick. There we go. Hi, Amy. There's a lot of people there that I know. Thanks for coming. Um, but I wanted to um, talk about uh, today. I'm putting three pictures there, um, which I'll be thinking through. There are three places where um, the Association de Recherche en Anthropologie des Médecins, so it's it's a grassroots organization on the anthropology of, of medicine in, in Yaoundé, Cameroon. And uh, I wanna think through um, the different ways that they um, attend to healing uh, or the kinds of relations they establish with and through plants in a, in a variety of ways through those three spaces. Uh, space time is what I want to think through. Not because I began with that as a conceptual theoretical framework, but that's where uh, it got me. So I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit just to give the context of, of this research, which was uh, from the beginning a, a little bit magical and interesting, but it's in January 2018 where um, I guess the year after we we hosted um, a conference at the University of Ottawa with CASCA and IUAES, which was called Movement. And with my colleague, Scott Simon, we, we received a grant and uh, because the University of Ottawa is bilingual, we had to give equal grants to Francophones and Anglophones and half of the people we invited were from Cameroon. So they, they had come to Ottawa. So, in January, I received an interesting invitation uh, from this association through one of the Cameroonians we had invited uh, to come and work uh, and meet and do a conference there. Um, it's in uh, the periphery of, Ye of Yaoundé. Uh, so just, just being invited for me was kind of an interesting, uh, it, it was a, very different approach to field work than to arrive there and and try to um, convince people of an interesting research. This was this was already interesting for me in in that way, and I wasn't completely understanding who exactly was inviting me. But uh, when I when I arrived there, I realized uh, he was um, a healer, a Bantu healer, and uh, I was going to be living at the. Um, at the headquarters for a month. So I went a month ahead uh, because of, I thought, well, it's far away and they were inviting me uh, as a guest uh, from far away. So I thought, well, I'm interested in, in these practices 
and I've been working, like Nick mentioned, um, at the intersections of, of um, different kinds of medicines for, I guess, the past 30 years. I'm a little obsessed, but I'm looking at it from always new angles. And this, this just offered uh, an interesting space, I thought. And at the time, I was also still looking for um, how, how, to, how to make these kinds of practices legitimate. I don't know if you've been paying, well, I've been paying attention through, through the pandemic, uh, how easily and quickly we dismiss any of the so-called traditional, although the very contemporary and very agile and very flexible kinds of medicines with plants, but they're, they're very, very quickly dismissed as uh, non-worthy of dealing uh, with a virus or a pandemic. So basically I, I had, I was still on that kind of how, how do we, how do we present these kinds of medicines um, in ways that, that can express all the complexities that, that they work through? And uh, so at, at that moment, I had um, thought, or I proposed to them, uh, how about we go, I go in through, um, through sounds or paying attention. I had done that a little bit to, to see how uh, in Jammu they prepare fresh healing plants through move specific movements producing energy and, and sound. So in this case, I had proposed to, uh, to pay attention to, to sounds or rhythms or the, because there are ways to express um, the powers uh, of these kinds of practices. And in particular with more specific interests, uh, how that plays into um, the kinds of relations that, that they establish with plants. So in preparation, I think some of you were there, we were caught, I went to another CASCA conference in Cuba and I spent most of my time in a, in a sonic triptych workshop uh, with Carlos Corbero, who is an anthropologist who works through sound and another student, uh, well, PhD student who uh, worked through sound, what's his name? Uh, Pablo Herrera, and also an artist uh, working through sound, Brandon Labelle. Uh, so even their, their workshop was also sonic triptych, so playing on three uh, space times or ideas, uh, basically thinking in three to avoid thinking in two or dichotomies, or which usually ends up in linear uh, modes of of thought. So I am uh, going to, th that's, that's the best way I, 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 well, that's the way I'm going to try to uh, present this. So in a non-narrative, non-logical way, perhaps, but hopefully the idea of thinking in, in triptychs, I also came, uh, came to it um, theoretically, uh, through with Deleuze, uh, Gilles Deleuze's assessment of uh, Francis Bacon, not the, the artist or the painter who, who also does uh, drawings in, in three, uh, which is the idea of um, that the, the three, one, if we look at the three images, the one with the rooster, and the beer and the plant, that's the, the headquarters where the healer receives um, continuously a flow of people uh, to treat. Uh, the place is, is really buzzing with people who always bring fresh plants or water or palm juice or something in exchange for a treatment. That's where we were, we were based. And uh, you, you enter the, this space with um, the tree of peace. So there's some plants that are, are placed uh, at the, this one is at the entrance, but then there, um, there's a cotton plant. There's also a mineral somewhere. There's different things uh, dispersed on the, on the, 
on the space, the, the building that, that we see, that's a massage room and also a kitchen because plants uh, and um, food in the healing, the, the one extends into the other. So there's a lot of remedies or ways of treating uh, that are done through preparation of food. Uh, but essentially the, the best description I, get, I can give of this space, which has that building and just in front of that building, there's a tiny little pharmacy where they did number and classify and codify and uh, at least two, two to 300 different kinds of plant sparks and leaves that they, they go and, and get for specific recipes. So there, there is that kind of um, classification uh, of plants uh, and there's a space to cook uh, up or cut or dry or prepare plants. So there, there, there's those kinds of relations with plants that are ongoing, but they, they also involve um, a rooster and an ant nest. And here there's a bottle of beer that is right in the middle of the way as you're walking, but um, we really have to avoid it because it's actually uh, still um, healing a patient at a distance. Uh, in this case, someone with uh, issues uh, with alcohol, alcoholism. And uh, so it's still working on uh, trying to deal with that, that problem for weeks it's there and if you make the mistake of hitting it then someone will click quickly come come back to replace it because it's still so this kind of of uh, of buzz it seems like everything is kind of kept animated on this site there's in the back there's a fireplace too where people sit whole families and then there's very long discussions and um uh, there's another living room and house where we were staying just in front as well. So th this whole place in the periphery, so in, in a, uh, of Yaoundé, a little bit outside of the city, uh, is, is um, the best way I've, I've found to uh, actually describe the intensities of the energies going through and the healer passing through uh, all these spaces and taking plants as, uh, as part of some treatments, sometimes minerals, sometimes others, sometimes ourselves, as he's treating someone and all of a sudden he locks us into the, the kitchen while he's treating someone um, outside. Uh, sometimes he, the, the healer also turns into a kind of an, another, um, he was turned into a mime for 24 hours where he's, um, still continuing to heal, but he's in another state of consciousness, uh, still healing and doing it. So working through through those kinds of energies. So the best way I found to describe that particular space was uh, from Gregory Bateson's um, idea of plateau as a region of intensity vibrating on itself. So this kind of very active and intense uh, place where uh, humans and non-humans uh, are kept kind of ready to do something. Uh, so in terms of uh, the relations that are established there, they're in a way every everyday practices or interactions where plants just take part uh, in, in, the, in the healing practices in all, in all of those ways. Uh, so if I, because it was three locations and because maybe I took the sonic trick to workshop and because uh, afterwards I came to, the, to this theoretical framework, it sort of works or helps in a way to uh, hopefully uh, to make sense that of, of these practices as taking place in, in that specific kind of clinic or with a little pharmacy, but it extends uh, much further than that uh, to, uh, to other locations. So the, the way that Gilles Deleuze uh, analyzes the triptychs 
the paintings of Francis Bacon is that there's always an active rhythm and there's a uh, sort of vibration and, and then there's a passive one, which could be the middle picture here in certain ways, in the sense that it's, it's kind of, um, I'll explain what that is, but it, it's another location, but it, it's, it's kind of just there um, waiting or available uh, to maybe bring something to, to the, the headquarters. And the third rhythm is, so the two rhythms are creating a counterpoint or you can think of a resonance in between. And the third, uh, the, the tree uh, is the ancestral forest, which is very much part of ancestral practices of healers or Ngangas in, in Cameroon. So trees outlive us and they're also acknowledged for having um, much deeper uh, knowledge, cosmological or other. So that's also part of what's going on at the headquarters. Uh, and in this, this theory, the, the third rhythm is attendant or it's the one that gives the impression of time or the three working together kind of offer a possibility of recomposing or, or making sense anew. So hopefully that makes some kind of uh, sense or probably not because, oh, well, there's Marley. <laughs> My daughter is here because she's going to also, we, like I said at the beginning, we, we came in with um, an interest in, in sound or uh, the speeds and, and uh, slowness of, of the different kinds of rhythms in those practices. So I'll, I'll get to the idea of joy uh, slowly, uh, but that's kind of a, a peak or something coming out like a surprise that is actually what a lot of the practices by the healer um, aim to do by surprise kind of unleash or unblock something or just um, destructuralize uh, a, a ill being conditions to, to let it uh, unfold it into something else. Uh, so we're working on, on the on the sound and how to express those those three time spaces, uh, which is not ready now, but it's part of um, uh, an attempt to to express uh, some of the complexities that the healer is actually uh, always barefoot, always alert, always ready, light, almost walking on the tip of his toes, and healing in a, in a in a surprising way in particular when you're not expecting it. He could poke you somewhere and as he felt there was a blockage there. If the video on, on um, downloads, we could, we could watch a few minutes uh, later. So this these headquarters where all of these people uh, come to get treated for all sorts of reasons, uh, often uh, in the night or in the evening and, and the healer available and kind of spontaneously really going towards people um, paying attention to, to the right timing or it's, it's, there's a lot of waiting. There's a lot of moments where nothing is going on. And then all of a sudden something something occurs. The second uh, image in the middle, uh, which here, but th with these triptychs, it's, it's to avoid the dichotomy or the, the thinking unilinary or causal logic, but they could be, I presented now the first one as active and the second one I'll, I'll present as passive, but it could, they play different roles at different moments and that offers other ways of understanding the, the complexities uh, of what is involved in these practices. So the, the second image is about a hundred kilometers away from the headquarters uh, on the road towards Douala, for those of you who know Cameroon a little bit, uh, where they have an antenna or another space for the association. And there, uh, they didn't receive any approval from the Ministry of Health because, um, well, that is considered uh, 
a threat to biomedical practices unless it's it's recuperated um, in laboratories or in a biological uh, far, biopharmaceutical um, kinds of uh, understandings uh, of plants. But they did receive the approval of the Ministry of Forestry. So, of course, they need these plants or these uh, to work with. So it, it also works out. And uh, if you have a look at their website, it's uh, Aram Association de Recherche en Anthropologie de Médecine. They do frame things in, a, in terms of environmental or sustainable development. So here they, they obtained permission from the Ministry of Forestry to, to replant um, 14 acres of uh, deforested land. And uh, receive permission to replant a certain amount of species. This is one of them called Bubinga. Uh, it looks like two lungs. It's one of, the, one of the ways that it's being used. And there was, there's another one. Here they were, they were asked to work uh, with the idea of species, but it's not, it's not a concept that they're necessarily uh, working with. So the, the idea of the botanical entity or the species um, being all the same everywhere is really not something that they're working with. Um, so Bubinga is Giburtia tismani, and then the other plant is Wenji, Miletia Laurenti. So those are the two species for which they obtained approval to, to replant uh, in, on these four, 14 acres. And um, they're already saying, well, we need at least nine other species or a, a greater va variety to, um, to be able to um, really recreate some kind of medicinal um, kind of um, usefulness of this this young forest or replanted forest, but they are trying to replant the plants that were there beforehand, but very loosely and very, um, it's, it's not uh, a relation of control or a desire to control, but it's more a desire to facilitate or to let the plants and the animals return to recreate some kind of, um, healthy uh, space for plants. Interestingly, when we went to visit, or just to give a sense of, of that place in contrast to, to the other two, we went for a walk there uh, during the first week. And uh, we're all walking in a, in a straight line. And along the way, there was a whole uh, process of identifying um, the different plants so everyone was telling well this is that this is this so it was more information about the plants for 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 a little while and um at so at some moment that was so there they were giving us the names they were showing us which parts showing us the bark and there were other healers we were about 10 people walking there uh my daughter who's here and my son were, were there uh, as well, teenagers, we were recording sounds uh, and uh, other people were filming as well. And then there was a, there, for about 45 minutes, we're doing the typical uh, thing of, uh, as if we're going in a botanical garden and um, kind of an exposition with the names of the plants and the different colors and everyone uh, sharing this, this information. Uh, but then, but then at some moment we, we started meandering and going in all sorts of directions or it seemed, didn't know exactly where, what we were doing. And all of a sudden the, the Nganga, the, the healer uh, or the founder of this association uh, just, just kind of runs into the forest really quickly and, and calls out, give me my machete. So very, very quickly as if he's hunting an animal. So he's just going in 
uh, to the bush and getting to a tree and kneeling uh, by the tree and, and um, putting his forehead on, on, the, on the trunk and then taking a few, um, a few pieces of, um, of the bark and putting it in a, I think it's called a hikoma leaf. So just putting a little bit of those, uh, of that bark in that, um, in that leaf, just useful, just use that as an envelope and uh, folding it up and then going meandering again into another direction and uh, taking uh, leaps from, an, from another tree and putting it in the same envelope and then meandering again. And then we get to um, a J tree. So I think it's um, Kekawati, so cocoa, cocoa tree. And then, then uh, we were asked, Either one of us, me, my daughter, or my son, we had to collect nine, nine of the leaves of, of that uh, tree or liana. And uh, so I went to, to pick them. And the reason it, it had to be one of us because uh, he was actually, we were actually walking in this forest looking um, for different plants because he had begun to uh, do a treatment on my son who had a bit of a hunched back. So the minute that he had seen that, he, he, he said, well, I can treat that. I can get your back straight. And he had already began at the headquarters some, some massage to loosen up the back and to, and here we were, we were collecting um, three, um, well, different, different plants to create a drink that will be later prepared in whiskey with a lot of hot peppers. Uh, but the, so what he was being called by certain plants and even I asked, well, how, how do you get to those plants? He said, well, we're just walking around and, uh, all of a sudden some plants just pop up and, and remind me that they can do something in this case. And the order of the selection of the plants was also important. And this last one that I was supposed to collect nine leaves was meant to homo homogenize uh, the mixture. All of that done while thinking of the treatment of the back, uh, and then we'll go on to to do that for three or other three or four other uh, people after that. Um, but inter interestingly, picking up the while well, collecting the nine leaves, um, I I just picked any any leaves. And then I asked, um, later on, I asked what, what, what that plant was because there was no more identification or naming plants uh, at this point. There was something else and uh, going on. Uh, so these nine leaves were explained as the third leaf that would enable to homogenize the mixture uh, with the other two plants. And I asked what the name of the tree was. It was a J, so a cocoa tree. And then, and then he afterwards he continues and gives me um, nine names for each of the leaves uh, that were collected. So Lum, Jajian, Ibogi, Dodogi, Lom, Evong, Teng, Totom, Golong, Bawai, and Titumut. So the same tree or leaf. So these were these were the action. These were nine actions that the leaves were going to do in, in terms of homogenizing. So I thought that was interesting uh, to name uh, the leaves in terms of their order also, because well, I won't go into that, but there's a lot of numerology and there's a lot of numbers implicated in, in this whole practice. So, so those two or three uh, different movements in, in the forest, so a very linear identification process of plants as we're more familiar with. And then this other uh, moment of paying attention or plants attracting attention. So plant calling in, in that way. So this, this, these kinds of relations 
uh, that are all done while thinking, well, in this case, uh, my son was there, but often they're, they're collecting remedies while thinking of uh, the people that they're healing at a distance and the process will continue in, uh, at the headquarters. And, and then I wanted to, uh, oh, the video is downloaded, Nick. Uh, but maybe I'll, I'll continue with the, the third moment or helpful or not, you could think of it as an attendant or the ancestral forest as, as having other um, kinds of relations that are more intense or are surprised me in, uh, in different ways, but in link with this, this tradition of, there's a, a classic written by, um, what is his name is escaping? Oh, Eric de Rosny uh, written in 1980s, but he's a French anthropologist and priest who lived in Cameroon for 20 years from the from the 60s and as a priest also followed a training as a Nganga but in his whole book uh, he was based in, in Douala but he he underwent the initiation to become an Nganga and uh, expressed how ancestral trees are so central and were in every village and they're considered to protect or they're actually considered to be the home of the ancestors. They protect the villages and they protect, but they also have this, um, contain this, this, um, this power or this force. And um, with, so just to give a little bit more before I, I continue explaining that, uh, because I went, I went there in 2018, but I've been continuing to work with this healer ever since. And last summer we were also supposed, to, I'm, I'm giving a field work course there. We were supposed to be there in person, but we, we uh, had to do it online. And one of the first um, sessions that they did uh, from Cameroon was at the foot of a tree where they were healing a young, uh, a young boy, um, with this it's not all trees but some trees are more powerful than others and the the healer plays the role the neutral mediator in between and uh, but there was a whole question and explanation of um how the the, the young boy who was being treated uh, he really needed to commit so he could be healed for whatever issues uh he had in this case was just things going wrong generally, but uh, to be able to heal, he also had to, to resolve his relations with his family. But taking uh, the, the powers of the tree through the healer was a commitment. Uh, the tree could also um, uh, harm him. Uh, so it's like an ambivalent relation. If he didn't get actively involved in his own, own healing process, being linked to the tree can become very harmful and damaging at the same time. Um, but the healer plays into that, um, that possibility of, I guess, uh, augmenting vitalities uh, from the tree to someone being healed. And in, in this book that I uh, just quoted by Eric de Rosny, so Les Yeux de Machev, in English, it's healers in the night. Uh, he, he gives an example of, um, of a specific instance where a healer had taken the energy of, of the tree and then the person he was supposed to heal never showed up. So he had too much of it. So he healed someone else. So there's this tangibility of this, um, of this power that can be, or we could call it joy if it augments vitality or sadness if if it harms or diminishes um, here I, i'm i'm thinking uh, the uh, joy with um concepts of uh spinoza i don't know if you're familiar how far i go with that but with spinoza it's an idea of body um as made up as composed of multiple bodies very similar to deleuze and Gattari's body without organs so it's this open uh, 
open body in, in the plane of imminence. So this is uh, one of the ways to, to, to make sense of these kinds of relations that are possible uh, within um, these practices, uh, which really uh, thinks also plants not as objects or not as discrete standard units or entities, um, but uh, really as part of, um, it's, it's a very aerial kind of uh, idea of the vegetal as regenerating the air. This is also, um, uh, some of you might be familiar with Emanuele Cochia. He wrote The Life of Plants, uh, where he's thinking um, the air or plants as atmospheric. And it, it helps to understand some of these practices uh, in certain cases. So in this, uh, so we, in, in my non-narrative or narrative, we returned to the headquarters, but later on we went to the ancestral forest and there, there were these kind, there's these very different relations with plants again. So through the whole uh, walk in the forest, there was no question of identification uh, of plants. There was a moment where there was also uh, just a encounter with a new tree that could, it was a straight tree and its bark was thought it was a tree the healer didn't know, but then just imagine that, oh, this could be useful to keep the, the back straight uh, that, we, that he was uh, fixing. So it, it's a much more um, reverential relation with the vegetal at this point. So it's not semi-domestication or semi-wild in the, in the replanted forest, but it's there we have a guide to not get lost, but there, there are also moments where um, we stop uh, at a basin or a place in the water. If we could see the video, it maybe in five, 10 minutes, uh, could show that, but there's a moment to, a place known by a river, um, a basin by some cliffs where there was uh, a healer that would heal people there. And there's a benediction there. We kind of have to go through a process. And then at some moment we stop in the forest completely from walking. And then we have to ask permission to continue uh, to go into, um, into the forest. And to get permission also involved other kinds of trees, not old ancestral trees, but young trees, which is interesting too, that young trees also have something to say that can, that can be interesting. In this case, it was, uh, this is all things I asked later on because at the moment I have no, no idea what was really going on, but uh, it's, it's another way that plants are calling and it's, I'll just read a short excerpt that I wrote. Uh, so agitated, nervous, slightly larger than the others at it, as it indulges itself with too much oxygen, it easily attracts attention amidst its multiple peers. It is telling, announcing, or yelling out that it is ready to do something else. On the verge of taking a line of flight, it had already taken on rhythms of its own for a while. It is now on the point of becoming something else and on the point of leaving the young tree from which it sprung. So before falling to join other lively motions of decomposition. It offers its insight or wisdom and can be intercepted by a healer to indicate foreseeable futures, to make decisions in immediacy. So these, this is just some leaves of young trees that are more nervous or agitated or bigger or just ready to fall, essentially. And those, those are taken as, um, as potentials for um, foreseeing um, futures or making a decision. So here it was to, to decide to, or to say if we, we could continue in the forest or if we needed to turn back. So it needed to see if the, the project that we were doing uh, with, with the association uh, was something that would work out and uh, or not, or so 
in the middle of the ancestral forest, we're trying to see if the University of Ottawa or my colleagues will agree with this project or if um, our relation will be fruitful and honest and, and uh, that uh, we'll be able to continue to work together. So all of that was um, involved. Um, and these leaves then are put on the forehead, which we'll see in the short video. And depending on if they fall on their back or on their front, they indicate um, that things are, are going to be all right, but it also indicates how many obstacles there will be uh, to surpass. Uh, and in this case, there was seven, needed seven leaves before we got a go. Uh, and uh, so both the ancestral trees and the young trees can do something in terms of, um, I guess we could call it co cosmology or uh, ways of, of making decisions, the right decisions, or foreseeing uh, how things uh, could go on, so, or not. Uh, and obviously it, with this, I go back to this theory that this could be the attendant or giving the impression of time. If, if we consider the depth of the possibilities um, of this practice uh, as it ex extends in time, both ancestors and in space. It's, it's somewhere else. It, it can uh, give a, a sense of the, the potentials of what's going on at the headquarters for their practice, but also for understanding um, anthropologically um, how they do much more uh, with plants uh, than can be imagined if, if it's just a project of wanting to um, verify the, the efficacy of these plants uh, through a laboratory study of the molecular uh, effects of one active principle of the plant on a specific disease. That's, that's one kind of very, uh, uh, mathematical calculation or time or um, mechanism. Uh, so here it's it offers ways of hopefully um, seeing that there there's here uh, much more complex relations that are maintained and established with plants, and also it can give insights on the ways. Um, of healing and, and tr having all of these possibilities to um, undo uh, uh, the state of someone being in, in ill health. Uh, so kind of um, not, not treating um, someone who's sick by taking charge of their life, such as the moment you any one of us enters the hospital, <laughs> we become passive, we're not, preferably not active uh, or uh, someone else will take care. So in, the, in these theories that would imply a kind of uh, dim diminishing of our uh, own effort uh, to persevere in existence. So in this case, it's, it's more through tricks or surprise or uh, it's just to enhance, unblock or, or let somebody get more actively involved in, in becoming something else than the sick uh, state that they were in. Um, maybe we could put the short video, which gives some, some of the rhythms that uh, inspired my talk, but also uh, uh, express the ways that um, this, um, these practices can, can be uh, understood because they are playing a lot with timing or kind of rhythms we can't measure. Uh, the emphasis is more on that uh, than on attempts to control or to constrict or to contain. Uh, so it's, it's just kind of um, 
aiming at healing someone in, in a very different way. I don't know, Nick, are you getting the video and yeah. then we could open to questions or discussion? So the video, uh, I was, so it uploaded to the group chat and then I was downloading it. And then while I was downloading it, it stopped downloading and said uh, that the file does not exist. The connection was interrupted. So I've been periodically checking my email to see uh, if it arrived there, <clears throat> but it has not yet arrived in my email. Um, I, just, so, I just sent it. Ah, it has just arrived. But um, no stress. I mean, we can open to discussions too. But yeah, or. Yeah, Julie, if you have the video, you could share your screen. Marley, I can't. If you were here, you could help me. Yeah. Uh, Cause okay, I could, I could try again. Yeah. What so you're not getting it through the video, uh, through email? Uh, through email, I get some link to, uh, to, to some thing I have to sign in or create an account to uh, view. Um, oh, through the email? Yeah, not exactly sure. Uh, what file sharing marley can i send it to you by by messenger but if you uh i mean i haven't gotten your your email uh, uh okay I, I finally can now download the video clip uh nope that didn't work um Marley, je peux -tu te par, uh, messenger well i'm trying to download it now well i'm downloading it but it's going to be long, maybe. Yeah, but something, Julie, if you um, if you click, I'm going to stop sharing, perhaps okay. allowing you to share. If Partager you... mon écran. Oh, OK, there Des you go. Des desktop. I mean, whatever you're doing is working. Is and it? You have yeah, to... I can see a video right now. And you have to really? partager le son. What? Oh. Okay. Partager le son would be um, if you click share screen, there's a uh, a window that appears at the bottom left of it. There's a, a little thing that says share sound. If you click on that, it will share the sound of. Uh, you have to that? unshare. You have to unshare and then reshare, and you'll have the option. How do I unshare or reshare? You hover sort of at the top of the screen and you say stop share, and then you repeat the process that you had previously done to, to share. Arrêtez, to le, arrêtez le partage. Okay. And reshare? Well, just share again, uh, but just click <laughs> share screen. And then make sure to click on the bottom left, share sound. It's a tough one on Zoom, I find. But once you, you get the hang of it. Thanks, Marley. Is, is this, this is not working out, is it? Paramètre audio? No, c'est quand tu partages l'écran, tu peux cocher euh, en bas. What? Ah, I see. Puis là, tu cliques sur la vidéo, puis ça devrait marcher. Uh, the video you did on desktop, but whatever you did for the video, the share sound on the bottom. Um. Hmm. Come on, that didn't work. Sorry. That's fine. It's just a trick. Excuse me. This is I was yeah? the one who shared the video. You were the one. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, wow. I didn't share it. <laughs> try again, but I uh, wasn't sure why you weren't receiving the uh, the. Uh, the volume. So yeah, because on the bottom left, there's yeah. a share sound. Now I know that, <laughs> but I can't share the button. Can I try again? Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Um, Miley, do not laugh at your mother's technological skills. 
You're very technological, Julie. <laughs> no. So, there we go. So it's just three minutes, it'll give you. Thanks, Tom. Is it slow motion? It's a bit choppy, but it's pretty decent. Yeah, good enough. <laughs> en plus de ce qu'elle fait comme activité et ce qu'on lui ajoute aujourd'hui, que notre bénédiction lui soit grande afin que cette exposition qu'on a commencé se termine dans de très bonnes conditions. Comme tu étais invisible, plus que j'avais ceci, on a travaillé au travail pour que tous nous devenions invisibles. So there's like 28 minutes, but that's it. That's probably enough for now. Thanks. That was uh, uh, spurred some more questions for me and definitely uh, spurred some uh, atmosphere of uh, intent uh, uh, being swept up in, uh, in, in, in actions there um, on my end, at least. Um, Thanks, Judy. Um, maybe we can let that sit uh, for a moment, but uh, I can take, uh, or we can take questions. Uh, Julie or myself, whoever sees questions first, um, can uh, go ahead and ask. I have uh, perhaps a question to, um, to begin. I have a few questions, but uh, I guess I'll just start with the one that's a bit more fresh on my mind right now after um, the healer so when the healer was uh, 
was working on the back. Was that Ascal's back or who? who? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, he's the he's the passive, and Marley and I had to had to watch, and I had to think if I was a good mother or. Yeah. If, it was quite painful, but yeah. Yeah. So for those that uh, you're now inferring, perhaps Askog is is, is Julie's son. Um, so when when the healer was 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 working on Askog's back, I mean, this is too simple, but a it, it felt very percussive, you know, very much like music and almost like a dance to some extent. I can imagine it must be a different feeling on the back, but um, but. So it's like percussion, drumming mixed with massage a bit, to some extent, moving, you know, moving some some energy around, perhaps, uh, and you know, at one point turning a skull around somewhat abruptly because it has to happen now, kind of thing. I'm just wondering. That's a lot of stuff going on with the healer. Does the healer afterwards uh, sort of cleanse his body in any manner uh, to sort of help that energy pass through or uh is the healer in a more of a mindset or experience where uh doesn't have to really cleanse but can just you know continue yeah. uh smoothly with all that yeah, good, good question is well before i think this was the third or fourth massage so in different days through the weeks and every time before the massage he had to drink the mixture of plants with um hot peppers and, and whiskey and um, pretty intense the first very first massage was um so kind of just to release or to loosen things up um but hitting the leg and the and the head was to make something circulate because it was blocked somewhere in in the back and the 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 assistant just beside it, but that he has to tell her to because there's some moving of energies somewhere through that. But this was, and she's carrying a butter butter de carité or with coconut. And so there's some kind of cream also, some plants put into into the back. But this was the the moment, the, the most intense moment, maybe where there was um, the 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 curb on the back was kind of flattened and, and some kind of um, flesh, well, I won't go into too many details, came, came through, but as he, as the, the, the column became straight, it squished the lungs, so he had to flip him around, so that, that was the whole explanation, so, uh, and every, from every massage, as you can see, how they're quite aggressive, and they're, they're quite, uh, we always add, Oscar's back was yellow blue but he felt better and and something about the energy of his voice was uh marley can say if i'm inventing things or or not but yeah we were we were three there which is which is another aspect that was interesting in the field work because marley asked questions i would never have asked and and oscar was kind of just being being treated well, we all got different treatments, but those were all ways to to understand some of the things that were going on. So, uh, in terms of, I didn't know that at all. But one of his foot, he told me, was a bit numb, uh, so energy wasn't flowing, and and so that that was all part of letting something like the energy pass. Uh, mm -hmm. That's interesting that you had a sort of a triptych uh, of researchers. <laughs> yeah, well, I mentioned, I'm saying my, some of the questions I would never have thought to ask was when he, for one day, became a mime and wasn't talking and was just acting and, and Marley just naturally asked him. So when you were doing that yesterday, I, I didn't think he would answer so spontaneously and know exactly what he had been doing when he was in, in, a, in a state of mind. So yeah, so that that was also uh interesting yeah um putting the floor back to questions i of course have more but i'll hold them for at least a moment to allow some space if not i won't make my i won't be shy and i'll just keep asking um well i won't be shy um oh yeah call it <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, I can't hear. Oh, so, yeah. Just okay. Um, just looking for that little button there. Um, I was wondering uh, about just the process of you conceptualizing what was going on, um, and and how, what sort of was there any sort of conversation uh, with the healer um, in uh, in the, the sort of three part modeling that you did. Uh, did that come after the fact or was that something that was emerging as you were in the course of this experience and was there any dialogue with the healer about that good, good question uh yes uh we actually this is actually uh what i'm presenting is, is an article that should appear in french which is written co-written with with the healer mm. but in terms of obviously, uh, he, he, he is the one who threw me the word joy. He, he, I wanted to record, but he had camera or they had cameras with the association and, and uh, we have kind of a, it, we're in the process of producing a film, which is, you saw just one tiny little part and he right away said, it has to be called the joy of Bassin Léger. And I said, what do I do with joy? I know Nick, Nick, brought joy into his presentations during the MA, but I, I didn't know how to deal with that in academia because they don't, it's not something that, that is necessarily a central concept, but immediately I, it brought me to uh, Spinoza and, um, and Deleuze and it, it, it just seemed to uh, correspond with um, the ways that he was explaining or, or practicing or um, and the three places are the three places they brought us in a different order but it takes part in their practices um, so it, it was along the way trying to make sense of what is done slightly differently what's going on and what's the relation between those those three places because they really feed in one into the other mm -hmm. getting the remedies in those places so it it's yeah it's hard to say sometimes when <laughs> if it came after the the sonora sensation or this triptych or it came like i mentioned with this sonic triptych workshop beforehand mm. so maybe it's seems to fit but I'm in continuous conversation. He actually called me again this morning. Um, so we're discussing these, these things, which was another very interesting facet of the whole research is that we're, um, we're really in conversation uh, trying to, and he explains everything in a certain way, but it, it's kind of um, interesting in that way. There, there are so many things like joy and love and intuition that um, it strikes me anthropology is woefully uh, inept at at dealing with. Um, it's it's and and part of it is that um, it, that it's not cognitive. Uh, a lot of it it's 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 uh, it, it's it's from another from another place. Um, or lateral, horizontal, or, yeah, I guess. I mean, how, for example, do we deal with the phenomenon of, of a plant calling out to someone? Uh, you know, and, and then he bounds into the forest and um, how, did he have any account of how that conversation with the plant occurs? I asked, I said, I even asked, so how do I explain that in academia? And he said, I don't know if you were there, Miley, if you remember how he explained, but I I kept going. We had we've had a lot of back and forths. And one of the he just explained that 
I had a flash yesterday of what, what we do when we go to the grocery store. We, things are all closed in boxes, but we still walk. I, I do that walk through, through the aisles and it makes me think of things mm. that I should get. And maybe it's healthy, maybe it's not. But it felt almost, that's, that's the way he explained it to me in terms of that particular, just walking around. But he said also, plants are just showing up and, and, and reminding me that they could do something for this case, for this, this, this case. Mm. Um, yeah, because <laughs> how, how do we explain it? So this is kind of bouncing if there's place for Deleuze and Gattari and sonora sensations, I figure there's place to explain these practices <laughs> with an anthropology. They kind of make make sense together. Hmm. And uh, I was looking just for a quote because I asked too what happens with the tree in this exchange of energy. It's just a short quote that I'll translate, but it's in, in the case of a energy transfer between a plant and a human, the specificity resides in the neutrality and the position of the one who operates that work. So the practitioner plays the essential role in that transfer. He's an element which, uh, through which plants and other, uh, so this kind, this kind of liminal position, uh, Mm. I guess that's how, um, yeah. Mm. Mali. Well, I don't know if that's how he would go and find plants, but the way he explained like ideas, it was through like some sort of connection we had with a, some like magnetic field that's in outer space. So it's like a spiritual connection and you're not the one acting, something acts through you, is what I understood. Hmm. That uh, reminds me of um, a conversation with, uh, with uh, 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 a healer from uh, Ecuador who visited Montreal uh, a couple of years ago, Manari Ushigua. Uh, and uh, I, I had a, I went into that conversation, I suppose, with a fairly naive idea about um, uh, the use of plants in healing. I, I imagined that the practitioner had, you know, a head full of recipes, and then when they diagnosed the patient, they would uh, decide, well, this is the recipe that's required, and they'd go and get the plants. But Manari. Uh, uh, yeah. described a, a very different process. He, he talked about, and, and, and um, y your comment just now about, about a, sort of a magnetic field is what partly what triggers this memory. Um, he, he says, you know, what I first I have to sit with the patient um, and th something happens with my energy that aligns itself with the energy of the sufferer. And, and what that suffering's about. And then I go into the forest and um, the, the plants sense that field around me. And it's, it's in that connection that the plants tell me this, I need, I can help you with this part of it. And then he continues his walk and another plant says, and I can help you with this and others that he might've thought would be helpful, remain silent. Uh, and so he comes back to the patient with an absolutely unique set of, uh, of, of a combination of, of plants uh, entirely tailored to the situation. So not really like a recipe at all, uh, which was what I thought was really striking about it. And there's some things in what you've described, Julie, which, which um, uh, seem rep reminiscent of that uh, process. Although your metaphor of sort of picking things off a shelf in the in the in the supermarket uh, <laughs> kind of fits the recipe model, but it can also it, it might also fit the 
Uh, Manari Ushigo model. Yeah, I thought it was just a, an easy example. It, it's not, these are just like boxes of things in contrast to maybe lively plants that are alive that do something a little bit more than a box of cereal or, <laughs> 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 but, but yeah. Yeah, there was something about going to the, the forest and Oscar was stuck carrying two huge bags because some of the some of the healers were definitely going shopping and coming out with as much as they could for their healing practices. Like it was like and they were just picking things in there. Like um, this was this was more the so, so I think there's all of these kinds of motions. There are the recipes. They kept giving me for this article recipes uh, for treating uh, women with, they do have recipes, but they're so loose and always adjusted and they do emerge from their own experimentation. So it's not, and and the way they classify is, is they've been doing this for 10, 10 years or so. So it's, mm. um, it's, their way that they organized from the practices and what was available. Um, but I guess that, um, yeah, those aspects, um, I guess I just want to point to the multiple ways that, mm -hmm. that they do deal with or work with plants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see that you have your hand up, Tim. I just want to say before passing on that uh, let's give a cardboard its credit. Sometimes in the grocery store, uh, it can take me quite some time to uh, to choose which box of cereal or which even sometimes like a can or which you know box of juice. Uh, even though they're all the same, they're all different, you know. And sometimes I might just be nuts, but uh, it can take sometimes. Sometimes one has a sheen or just a feel in the hand or something. That's the one. Um, it's understandable with apples or something. They're all, all actually, you know, you can see them and feel them. But even boxes, they, there's something they're calling. And um, and Julie, you talking about plant calling some time ago has actually uh, influenced me uh, in terms of my grocery shopping. Um, okay, uh, Tim. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hi. Um, just in relation to this, it, 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 it seems that from what you've said, Julie, that it's not so much the individual plants, although we see that the plant world breaks down in some way, but but it's the pl you 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 describe going to a particular place to this particular forest and. Within that that experience, how important is is it the, the place rather than than individual species of plants, which it seems like there was you know, not a lot of emphasis on that, um, or even uh, it, it, in relation to that the individual plants. I thought I thought it was interesting that you talked about how that young plants still had had importance even though there was a, an attention to the to the sort of the you know the large individual plants um i, I just wonder how, if, how that plant world breaks down to, do, uh, uh, are they are they in, how much is important to differentiate species and and then are are is there also is there, is there a differentiation of 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 a of in individual plants of that young one versus the old one um and, and in that does that that do those individuals do they have are they in, do they have individuality or are they gone to that forest because it's sort of the plants rather than in the place of plants and the the other element in this that that it seems that 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 uh, this sort of strikes me, having worked in Africa and been in forests and worked with African medicine, is that, um, and and you you in your three pictures you you alluded to this 
that that the 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 third one is that big powerful that old tree that has that that long history and memory in in and in african cosmology so important is is ancestry and ancestors and how much is it important in the coming back to this place that you you went to that that forest is that is that and place of uh, ancestry not only of, of the of individual human ancestries but really the the culture the, the wellspring of African, uh, certainly West African culture, um, and the his, the collective history of people is is forest peoples who you know who who have shared that that heritage through time. And I'll turn. I'll wait for uh, Julie's response. So. Yeah. Uh... Um, I, I, if, if I, if, if I just take the, the healer in what, what he, what he wants to do, maybe it'll link back to magnetism, but he, he's there with, with a really broad concern of just keeping as many living things healthy, uh, as, as possible. And, um, overall so he's just trying to get people to get out of sickness or get out of um sorcery that might have been harmful or um obviously every everywhere we are in cameron i think it's the first clear cutting i mean the the, the trees that are being cut are like five meters <laughs> so there, there's this kind of um feeling of, of deep sadness with that when the when the trees fall so the, this um connection that they made with the ministry of forestry to to keep that forest available to them for the very reasons of replenishing uh healers with live living um living plants uh, <clears throat> is definitely something that um they're 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 fighting for that that's really uh, crucial to the possibility of the quality of the kids and the continuity of, of their practice. Um, I did I, for for the question of individual. It is plants in context. It is plants that are growing in a certain place, and it is a, even for minerals. You showed me they brought one one rock back to the headquarters, but in the forest, he was explaining and showing how this mineral is good, but it's good it's good here because of the moss that's under. But if we bring it in the sun, it it, it won't be we won't be able to to um, use it in, in in the same way. So it's always. And I think this, this question of the magnetism, because I didn't go there yet, I didn't, I didn't deal with that, but there's a whole tradition of, of, um, of healing through sound, or you could call it musical therapy, but it's kind of an extension of a practice called VET, which is the theatrical performance. But in, in the book that the healer wrote himself, there's a whole section on sounds and he does come back to the question of magnetism and the sun and the, the different locations and the the energies that are that are sensed maybe in the way that Colin referred to by sensing the person that's there. So so there is that yeah being barefoot all the time even in government buildings in the city being alert being light but the healer doesn't like to touch or he would touch. Marley then had to take the energy out because it would give a headache. So he won't touch uh, people too much because he has this excess of energy. Uh, so he explains. I don't know if I'm going, I'm straying from your question, but there's- Well, um, just sort of, you're, you're so evoking something, another aspect of it though, I think that, that you know, I can bring back to, to what I was, asking about originally i mean just the use of the word magnetism and which is his idea right he's using the words magnetism or using the word magnetism because magnetism is a concept of western physics not of not of uh, african 
you know, spirituality. So, so this, there's a modernization of concepts that clearly, you know, have roots in, in, and, 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 and African spirituality. But again, in, in my understanding of, of the of traditional African uh, cosmology and spirituality that is that's the end it's the spirits of ancestors that are that are, are fundamental so i just so how does the, those ideas how somehow they're he's he's articulating some of something in 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 a way that is blending some some something of tradition and something of, of modern concepts as well and so are you yeah um, I didn't stick to the word magnetism. Marley really just reminded me that that was something he referred to, and now I'm reminded that he brings it in his book. So, um, very uh, maybe hybrid or a mix of using words, because there's also references to numerology. Uh, one time during the one of the massages there was alternative like kind of new age music that he put on in contrast to other sounds so in, in the spirit maybe of um i don't know if some of you might know here um trudakova who works in 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 buddhist medicine it's called plant matters but there's kind of this this wrestling between, yeah, what would be more African or or more a mixture. Cameroon is fascinating for that. I, I'm not. I don't know. I haven't been working there for thirty years at all. But there's a, there's practices coming from groups of Africa. I worked in South Africa beforehand, and some things were similar. But there there is obviously. Um, uh, Kind of a flexibility to grasp whatever uh, is there that can make sense or that can appeal. Um, like their website, there, there is, there's, it's appealing to sustainable um, development. Uh, in in those words, and I, from their website, I said, oh, I don't know which kind of practice I'm, I'm getting involved into is it just going to be a garden of cultivated plants in a very um, controlled kind of practice but it was something it was that but also <laughs> and I'm going to do Marisol de la Cadena thing but not only that <laughs> so I think there is kind of impurity to the or trying thing, things out but where where in Africa has has your work Okay. Uh, mostly in East Africa, in uh, Kenya, Tanzania, but uh, I, I have been in Cameroon briefly, but I sort of have a sense of how the air tastes in Cameroon, that's about it. But, uh. Is there Stacy Langwick working in Tanzania on the traditional medicines too, and, and, and exploring different um, and uh, also malaria, degedege, like the, the play in between the biomedical categories being used for different purposes. So there's there's obviously that kind of uh, intermingling of um, of words and ways of expressing the practices. You know, I, you know which is very fluid, clearly. It, I mean, it, even in, I mean, you'd ask me, you know, it's not only when I work, but you know where, where I you know, did work that's closest to, you know, some maybe some of the things we're talking about here today. When I think back, it's twenty more than it's like twenty five years. Well, you know, Africa's changed a lot even in those twenty five years in terms of of people's, you know, the influences in in the way they see the world. So you know, just the conceptualization, it, you know, uh, bringing in concepts like magnetism. May, may not have been even uh, you know I'm I probably maybe heard the words in that context before, back then but very you know not not that was not the usual as I said you know there's still much more of the the sense that uh, 
of the ancestral aspect of it that uh, you know the spirits of the ancestor type thing but i i think i think the it's the tangibility of that presence i mean the missionaries called everything spirits we were talking yeah. about or they like but uh i guess magnetism i heard too in the practices in in java well by another anthropologist who's been working there he used that term but i guess it's the energies or the f even en energy yeah. another problematic word of yeah. forces or the the intangible when when in the video he's talking about we, we made our we made you invisible for a while we worked on that uh, this idea of double view or, or making us invisible in the present to be able to see in the future i found again in again in this book by anthropologist uh, eric de rosny who who spent more time in cameroon at another period but maybe i didn't even specify but this this particular healer is is basa uh, bantu but there's a series of other uh, kinds of healers that are part of the association and the, the one who invited me there, he's a historian, not a healer, but he's been working for 20 years uh, with um, Pearl. So in the north of Cameroon with other healers uh, there. And um, so there, there's really a, a big uh, scope. And it's really through time that I then I started to see, oh, this is something that this anthropologist uh, Eric de Rezny also noted in, in Douala and it helped me make sense of some of the things that, that were going on. But, uh... So I, you know, I, I don't see any other, there are no other hands up. But just one, one more final question I have in relation to that is just this, the forest, you, you went to a forest um, in, in parts of certainly on the, well, throughout East Africa, um, there are particular forests that are sacred. It's not, not all forests are, you know, can, a forest is not just a forest. And, uh, you know, this, this forest that you went to, is, it, is, is there some, any element of that, of, of sacredness, or is it a forest is just a forest? No, that's, it was presented to me as the sacred forest of Bassin Gliger. And for the title of our article, I asked, because the editor asked me, do you keep the sacred? And uh, he said, no, take, take the sacred out. But it's definitely, there's a healer that used to practice it. The, the argument to not continue to deforestate is based on the sacredness. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's obviously there are, guides and they're kind of protecting or there's certain places where healers are known to have practiced for quite a long time so there is there there is um an aspect of that there i mean even um i mean that 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 that, that way in which the concept of sacredness is used in the in the current conservation you know priority and context is, is very interesting. Just, I'm just thinking as you were talking, I went and back, back and checked out the, this recent case in the city of Nairobi that uh, they, they've changed uh, after, after a big public outcry, they changed the, sort of the configuration route of some major constru highway construction, not of the sacred force, but of a sacred, single sacred tree that, uh, you know, this big, sacred very, fig tree. Very recently, yeah, the fig tree. I yeah, within that the last couple of months. I don't know what the yeah. date on it is, but certainly very recent. Press. They won. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, thanks for those questions, Tim. Um, I have a few uh, ideas um, that hopefully will be sort of question-like. Um, one is that, you know, when we're talking about magnetism and, and then uh, uh, Tim was bringing up sort of ancestors, spirits and things of the sort, 
when we talk about syncretism, it, it feels to me, and perhaps correct me if I'm wrong, Julie, or, or corroborate if I'm right, but it seems to me that, um, you know, uh, sort of let's say either like new introductions, be they a concept or a tool, um, you know, which the concept can be used as a tool, um, but, but essentially a new sort of concept or tool comes in and it can help someone, uh, uh, let's say, communicate, express, explain to someone else or even to themselves what they've been doing for quite some time, right? It can just be a new, uh, sort of a new, uh, uh, sort of, yeah, just a new way of, of putting an old thing, but also it can actually have these new uh, concepts or tools can actually um, sometimes influence and actually change the way of, of doing things. Um, but, but I guess I started from the end, but I do, but I do think sometimes though there can be an introduction of something new. It doesn't necessarily really change your practice, but just gives you um, another perspective on it. And I, and I wonder if that is, and, and I think that healing in general, when it's, you know, uh, uh, energetic and interpersonal lends itself well to that, but also especially when, when you're in a mode where, um, where it's not even just a species, there's no recipes, it's, 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 it's very particular. And so that seems like the particular is such a, uh, sort of a fruitful, mm, it, it's, it's fruitful atmosphere for fostering, uh, I guess, improvisation, call it syncretism or whatever, but, but, but um, harnessing what, what works in, in, in a timely manner, when it works, and when you're there, when, you know, chance encounters or things of the sort, um, that's something. I think, yeah, I think, well, here I can come back to Gregory Bateson and his kind of theory of ecological flexibility too, or if you think of certain religions like Hinduism, they're able to to um, to co-opt all the new kinds of gods without it threatening Hinduism, even it keeps it alive and animated. Uh, but I, I think I think in in this case, if 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 we're okay in this plane of imminence, which I found also in Java in the sense that they're treating fluid bodies of winds and flows and not discrete individuals anatomical to fix or repair. But in this in this plane of imminence, so this even the triptychs are horizontal and their relations are are um, are occurring on this lateral. So we can think of Natasha Mars and co uh, involuntary momentum or this whole possibility of passages in between lives during lives, not in this linear evolution of we're born with a, a program, but, but back to, to, uh, I, I obviously, I don't know, um, uh, they're able to, they're, whatever doesn't threaten can fit and can take part and there's something interesting with relation to that because we became somehow, I don't know, uh, at some point where we're there, he's healing someone and we're just passing by going to the kitchen. I mentioned it br briefly, but they, they locked us in the kitchen for a while because it was to make a point with this person who might have issues with people from elsewhere or there was, so we, we weren't like in the way, but we were, brought to be part of just another element that could potentially uh, get someone out of some kind of problem. So with, with Bateson, if, if the practice is, is uh, loose enough and not too striated tightly, uh, it's not threatened by by new elements, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one way I, I like I like to think of it. Uh, so it's true though, every time he, like the term magnetism for me evokes something from somewhere else that didn't make sense, but that of, uh, uh, or I guess an attempt to explain something in, invisible or intangible 
with words that maybe came from other encounters with um, they've had beforehand, I imagine. Yeah. For example, with magnets. <laughs> um, but, there, but there is in all of that, like, cause, because uh, there was a question on, on space or location. So there is that uh, idea of uh, what what is passing through the earth to and where people are located and the proximity to to the tree or to another person or to an object uh, that's working or yeah mm -hmm. based on the notion of place i was kind of maybe gonna finish with this thought but i have another one if possible but this notion of place i think of you know the, the forest um, where where people went to run their errands um that's english that's english do um, so do the leaves, you know, let's say a, a, a leaf ready to fall, right? That can be a, a leaf to take to, to do medicine. You continue, you read the forest. The forest is full of these leaves and of, of bark and things. And if a human, you know, or a, or a healer, someone who doesn't, isn't called to pick it up, you know, and it eventually the leaf falls and falls on the floor of the forest. Is that, um, is there medicine or activity going on um, on the forest floor, sort of like a potion mixed of all these leaves and pieces of bark that haven't been harnessed by any human healer, haven't been removed? Or is the interaction between healer and plant something that sort of activates some uh, healing you know, aspect. Um, so kind of, yeah, how, how does that work? And, and if, if it is sort of like a potion that you're walking through, uh, is there any trickiness there? Who, who, who's brewing that potion? Uh, does anyone harness it? You know, kind of, it's just what goes on there? What does that make you think of? Yeah, good question. But just the, the leaf that's that's agitated it or ready or how we explain it's ready ready to do something else it could it could just go on to compost mm -hmm. itself but that that question that that you're asking uh was brought up a lot in the in the replanted forest and leaving things really loose and just kind of giving it this um there was a sense of time that was needed for things to become uh, useful again, or I don't know that potion, <laughs> but that, that kind of balance uh, could only come through time so that it was kind of a loosely planted uh, forest that should bring back the animals and the, the things should resettle in, in uh, whichever way it would, but in a way that that, that would bring, but, they had ideas of certain plants that would be useful to treat certain recent um, diseases. So, uh, so there's kind of this thinking the forest with relation to the current problems or emerging uh, issues or diseases that, uh, and then finding the ways that that those things can be make, made to work together to keep um, people and plants healthy. And I remember a healer in, in South Africa telling me uh, because all the land was being kind of taken away in, in the ghetto, in the townships. And uh, he said, all I need, just give me a tiny forest, any forest, give me three years and I'll figure out again, a new how to, um, treat all sorts of things but it it would need require that time or that intimate co-presence to uh make sense of what could be done but uh. and thanks my my last sort of question i guess or just i, I i'm uh yeah sort of mired in this so this is somewhat paradoxical 
at least as I grasp it at this point, how, so there was mention of, um, and I believe uh, the, the healer, your, your co-author mentioned this uh, about himself sort of being um, a certain uh, neutral, so a neutrality, you know, the, the healer is neutral. Um, and thanks, Colin, it's nice to see you. Thanks for your great um, <laughs> nice questions you, and conversation pieces. Um, and on that note, also, Amy uh, texted me to say that her phone died and she wasn't at home, so she was booted out of the room. Uh, uh, but she is now preparing a uh, presentation for 2.30. Um, so this aspect of neutrality, um, so that the healer is, you know, seen as sort of a, a neutral aspect. I, I, I picked up on that earlier, between sort of interfacing between medicine and, uh, and, and patient, you know, um, and, but then also, and well, also, and that makes me think of actually the sort of the leaves, the nine leaves, I believe that, that you picked, um, from the tree that, uh, that helped, um, homogenize the other potions. So for some reason, I, I think of the neutrality of the healer to some extent, resonant with with those leaves with like that action and and part of what it brought it to mind is that the the healer with you know standing with the the leaf like it just felt like so um uh integrated um but then after that there's notion of and also he he, he walks bare feet right so he's feeling everything but then there's the notion of can't touch everything because this is then gonna is like it's too um, too receptive, right? Um, and then needs to cleanse. So kind of how does um, he go about being both neutral and somewhat uh, perhaps volatile by nature of receptivity? I think yeah. Or am I am I just no, good question, because the neutral, maybe one thing he repeated more, and there's some people here that were in, in the course this summer, Ariel and Emma, um, maybe not neutral, but the word he used in French is lest or souple or light or, you know, just alert and ready, like kind of like being on the tip of the toes, mm -hmm. I guess, or... Um, so making, or it, it, it even fits with the body without organs, like from Deleuze and Guattari, it's this, you keep as much, as little as possible of the body just to reemerge the next day. But it's, it's this, this lightness that makes you more um, open to other bodies, sounds or whatever, or possibilities, but at the same time, more vulnerable to being affected by so it's kind of that being agile, I guess, you know, you go in snow park, in snow park, Nick's, it's like this, this, you have to be, you have to be loose enough to not hurt yourself too much, but still be kind of in a zone or alert to everything that's going on. So, yeah, I guess doing that puts yourself in positions where you can get hurt sometimes when you're being so light. Risky. Um, Natalie, is that a question or is that a bye? Uh, it's like a comment. A comment, yeah, sorry. Please, Natalie. Well, I feel like he had like two states. He would often switch from being like this really funny, super light character that would like scream and dance and do whatever, like absurdities. And then in the same second, it would go like and be, and it would turn and be like um, grave, like dramatic. And then we'd have to be quiet and listen to what he says. He'd like change tones. And also he would also, I think he, he would treat people with humor a lot and would be like really receptive to that. I remember like sometimes he was like treating some people and I would zone out or whatever. And then when I look in front of me, he's like sitting and he's making fun of me and he's like flipping his hair. He would like do like some sort of theater to make us laugh. And I think it was in a way like treating us or like keeping us happy in there. 
ludic performances i think that's it's all but and tricking tricking yeah doing things unexpected or by surprise or catching you off guard or emptying uh another girl's uh purse and and she's got but it was funny he's just throwing everything like come out tana was like mm -hmm. those were um and he put on a, a man was sitting and his treatment he put two pieces of um pineapple oh. on both his knees and one piece of tomato on his head and the guy had to stay still like that for a really long time. <laughs> yeah, and it was like a humoristic treatment. Batman. I remember the summer too, there was like a certain amount of like shock. Like uh, he would sort of just come out with phrases to sort of shock people sometimes or to, it was almost like you were never like, it was like, is this funny or is this serious? I'm not quite sure. What's going on? Emma was know? in the in the class online, and he just told her that you, she, you don't like yellow, uh, white. <laughs> was yeah, person? I was supposed to wear more white. <laughs> yeah, and I said that I I said that I didn't like wearing white because it got dirty really quick, and I would always stain it and stuff. And then he was like, "Then you're lazy." <laughs> so are you wearing white now? No, <laughs> I did actually for a while as an experiment, but yeah, I don't know. I have to think more with that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. How did the experiment feel? Um, yeah, like I have very few like items of white clothing and I'm definitely not drawn to them. So it was, um, it was like, it's a bit uncomfortable, you know, when you wear clothing that you don't feel, um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I, yeah, I, I have more clothes than I actually wear. And there's those ones that you always come back to, you know, that feel that just have a certain feeling about them. Yeah. And my white clothes are not, are not that. So I tried it for a while kind of intentionally, but it's, yeah, I like, it was, uh, it was uncomfortable. I think it was like part of that, like getting out of your, there's that whole element of like getting out of your comfort zone, I guess, in that. But it was one of those things that I did for a while and then it just sort of faded away. But another interesting that happened in the, in the course was, well, Emma is working her doing her MA on, on plantain, so this plant. So we also showed him one of the these plants through the online class. Do you remember what he said about it, Emma? He seemed to to just by the the expression of the plantain, the plant, have some ideas of how it could be useful because there's this whole um, idea of treating at a distance, but this is another idea that came up that trees all connect, speak to each other, obviously. So he was online in Cameroon at the foot of a tree and we, some of us were here outside in front of a pine tree and there was some conversation around that because that's another idea of traditional medicine as being just local and just in terms of those places but he kept bringing up no no and telling one student that was living in a in a condo in Ottawa that she should go down to the river and there were plants there for her against COVID-19 <laughs> but she was living in a condo by a river um which he, he, I don't know how he knew that, but. Yeah, and some of it, I don't, I'd have to check my notes. Like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I'm, I, I feel like he said that plantain was good for the liver, mm -hmm. something about the liver. And um, he said, I can't remember how, like he described something about it. It just made me think of sort of like doctrine of signatures type stuff that you can like read into the medicinal properties of something by, like aesthetic form or like maybe like a gesture the plant makes or I mean people kind of um get you know creative and spring like there's all kinds of things that spring off of that but um but yeah I should check my notes actually that inspires me to check my notes <laughs> on that <laughs> another story of plantain it's going to be a good thesis <laughs> 
got to write it. <laughs> no, there's Nina, Saba, Tara, Ariel. Any comments on the triptych? Was it useful or more confusing? Well, I mean, it's apropos. Um, it's, it's certainly, you know, like I say, it's, it's not so linear. So it's, 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 it's more intriguing, I guess. Let's say it's not like, okay, I know exactly already where I am, where I'm going to go. And now we're just going to fill it in. It's more like a, it's a ride along a bit, which I find quite pertinent for this, um, matter of discussion, you know, um, and I enjoyed it <laughs> personally. Any any tips for Marley how to do a sound to bring sound around to express that? Or does it give hopefully it gives you ideas, Marley? Yeah, for sure. And I was listening to the sounds uh, yesterday and to the massage sounds are like pretty special and percussive. And also we have recordings of a night where a percussionist came and everyone was like dancing yeah. and tapping on things. And the right -hand drum. Yeah. yeah, and some of it is like, resembles the massage in a cool way. Hmm. It was interesting too, how there was like the vocalizations while massaging and um, I was just like, I, I was like, it made me feel like he was trying to like evoke something else with that. And I was like, oh, I wonder what that is. Like, I wonder what yeah, what's those shrieks. Yeah. I guess it, 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 that was to complete the work, I guess, or change mode, or I'm not sure, because there is that in the forest too. Yeah, it reminded me actually a little bit of like some, like, I don't know, yeah, some animals sound like that. Like I've heard monkeys that make those kinds of noises and stuff. And it's just sort of like, oh, <laughs> interesting. I feel like it's an energy thing. It's like to like throw it out there because you can't contain it. Because they, they yeah. also, in the recording of the, with the percussionist, everyone's like screaming, going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you do that again, Melanie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick appreciates that. Well, something to look forward to. Nina, Saba, Ariel, any? I guess it's our time is over anyway. Yeah, right? it's our time. And also, just to follow up with what Melly was saying, the the sort of, I, uh, I well, I can't exactly remember what we're saying, but sort of a getting passing energy, kind of like a, a focusing. It felt very targeted. So definitely like a, a bringing yeah, around, drumming, 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 drumming. And then yeah, like you know, going on the back mm -hmm. where there was the, the very targeted. No. Um, anyway. um, but yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Julie, so much for your for your talk, your photos, uh, and the the great yeah. conversation. Thanks a lot, Marli, for coming along as well, and uh, uh, you know, presenting some of the work that you uh, were part of. Um, it was very fun to, to to have you here and to to, to have your uh, very pertinent um, contributions. So thanks a lot, Marie, not only pertinent contribution in the research, but also in the talk. Uh, thanks a lot, Tim, for your, your great questions. And uh, Tom, for having uh, come in and, and shared your screen. That was very, uh, and your sound, yeah. uh, that was very, very helpful. So thanks. And uh, thanks everybody for being here in attendance. Thanks Carmen, uh, as always, for, for having uh, made this event possible and for having done the techno wizardry uh, make it happen. Thank you, um, everybody. Yeah. And thanks, thank Nina, for sharing uh, the talk with the Planthropo Lab. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being here in attendance. And uh, our next talk will be in, in March, March 12th. Uh, Kenyuki Kirigia, who was here earlier uh, from McGill, will be presenting Disciplining Pastoral Livelihoods, Losing Land to Gain Conservation, a question for the racial capitalist scene. And then we'll have uh, two other talks, March 19th and March 26th. Bjorn Reichart, as well as Greta Semplici will be coming. Uh, so that'll be some nice, fun uh, international guests. And then we have uh, two more uh, to close out in April. But um, yeah, so five talks to go. Um, going fast, but thanks everybody for being here and uh, stay tuned in your email boxes for, um, you know, 
uh, links to another virtual room like this uh, in the time to come. So thank you yeah. very much, everyone. We'll stop recording if anyone wants to to hang around. Uh, please hang around. I can say something. I don't know if you could hear me. Yeah.